that should be able to get early push, especially once you get that static shift completed. Yep. Um, and it's this Talia that's going to be one of the biggest uh, things that determines the outcome of the early game. Razork has been known to find fantastic early game leads, and his responsibility is going to be finding those opportunities on this Talia that has been fabled in the scrims as one of the strongest champions on the meta. And that's why I think he does need to try and desync from peak cheer. Like, if if you can try and separate yourself from the Ivern and play around Nautilus in the bot lane with, like, Nautilus hook into Talia flick back, I mean, you're pretty much guaranteed a kill on either of the champions on that bottom side of the map, but if you end up in a situation where Ivern's able to come in and get a counter gank off, it can go a little bit sideways depending on if uh, you're able to get enough burst damage down. So I'm definitely curious to see how Razork plays this one to make sure that he can have that success in the Tali in the early stages. High stakes here for Fnatic have bet a lot on the power of their of lanes against Excel. The options remain in the focus of scaling. Let's find out what happens here. Match point for Excel as we get into our fourth game. Ivern bait level one. Backfired on Fnatic in the previous game. Will Excel find more success here? Spawning out. Maybe just trying to disrupt the early jungle path. Thing. It's very peaceful with all these subtle sound effects. Yeah. Sounds of the rift. Drifting I mean, this away. is this is the only moment of peace these teams are are really going to get before the minions have spawned. I will say I do prefer a seaside to ping ping. Minions. Question mark. Ping. <laughs> ping. <laughs> Does it not remind you of seagulls, Doctor? Clapping <laughs> 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 waves. And that, that's what a seagull sounds like. Yeah, in whales, that's what they sound like. Uh, they're what? What? Yeah. <laughs> we have seagulls in whales. Are you just, just, are you just relying <laughs> on the fact <laughs> that most people have never been to your country to Correct. just lie to us? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Doctor says stuff about Ireland all the time. I like how your voice became Irish when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the only way to say Ireland. I don't know. Ireland? It got worse. You did it really yeah. <laughs> yeah, Welsh, The I is uh, not always involved. In Welsh, when you I want to Ireland. roll the R. I want to go Ireland. <laughs> so there you go. All right. <laughs> You're both He's just cut mad. Off. He doesn't have an accent. I can say it so if you want. I can say it in Irish if you want no, to. No, I'm good. <laughs> Gang, we're in a very interesting position. Again, because of the way the upper bracket unfolded. Uh, kind of a surprise explosion of Mad Lions in terms of overall performance. Both these teams, I expect, to make it to Worlds, or at least make it to top four in the Worlds qualifying series. And now, of course, only one can make it through. Single game left as this game, unsurprisingly, pretty quiet thus far. Yep. You'll see Ivan doing what Ivan does, pathing back towards bot, where he set up all of his little thingies. And... Uh, I don't know the words, it's just his passive, and he's yeah. just going to kill all of them. Little thingies is fine. People know what you're talking about. Razor's going to do the same, except on the other side of the map, pathing up towards top. His Actually, team. I mean, I guess they'll both end up on the same side of the map, but there's really not much to play for on the top side. It's just a question of how the crab will play out, based on the fact that Humanoid has push, and Oscar Rennen is winning out on trades. Peach really shouldn't be in a position to contest this crab, so he'll likely have to path back towards bot. But you talked about it, Dracos. You were concerned about the early laning phase, and you look at the mini-map, Pushing lanes for Fnatic all across the board. They have top push, they have mid pushed, and they have bot pushed, which fortunately for Azor gives him a lot of options on what he wants to do. Peach, though, making his way top. Can they really find something here? I mean, Ivern early on in a long enough lane, you can get a lot of work done here. Ranged autos is Oscar. Nice little sidestep there. Out oh, oh, Peach! Oh, man, that was rough. <laughs> Tried to predict the flash from Oskernan, but. Asgerdon holds his own, doesn't go for it. It means that he's able to walk away. And now Peach down a flash, not able to get the scuttle on the top side. And as Vedi was saying with the push in mid, I mean, I think Razork just immediately runs the bot side and picks up both scuttle crabs. And ultimately, a bit of an awkward exchange. Good news is, not going to cost too much here. Small gold leads on the top side for Fnatic, but again, 100 or less, so not going to be too significant. Really want to see, again, what the Talia can do. Talia mid lane has been a relatively, I'm gonna say, underwhelming pick most of the time. Certainly not the uh, most explosive champion. It's a bit of a trade here on the bottom side. Should be in limit. Just going in. 
Yeah, I mean, I've heard that, I mean, we saw it last week, Permaband, the champion. Peach looking for another gank here. Razork should be able to spot that one out thanks to the ward. He's just going to continue his base, though, wants to spend some of that money that he's picked up. Lost Trapped already secured. Definitely a big buy for Razork in his first base. But on the, the Talia point, I did expect to see it, but I actually thought we'd see it more in the jungle. So Three, actually, four. Yeah, Abadage takes a good chunk. The cooldown got reduced on the E, and also its damage got increased from 150% damage to monsters to 175%. So that's the big reason that we started to see it way more in the jungle. And then also the base damage on your threat of volley also got increased. So I knew, I thought it would be way more than we saw it on these more carry oriented junglers like Razork. And it's nice to see that he has finally managed to get his hands on it, although. Uh, the lanes are going very interesting at the moment, where uh, maybe Razork wants to take a quick visit to one of these. On the other hand, they're doing fine on their own, so I guess he can kind of just chill. We get to see what a power farming Talia looks like. So often I'm just used to seeing the champion soul queue where it's very feast or famine. Razork in the area, maybe hoping to bait something here, but Peach already coming in. Razork now ready to respond. Unraveled Earth thrown down, but Abadage just going to be able to walk away from that one. Nice bit of coverage from the brush, courtesy of Peach, making sure that he can get out. Trade of flashes in the mid lane. And uh, Razork just going to help get this wave pushed in. Trimby wound. I don't think he should be Last able to find anything. Oh, oh, he just full commits! Wow. I guess they must have still had vision on him. Flash over Ignite. Well played there by Trimby. Secures first blood for Fnatic. I love a bit of bloody support play. Brilliant by Trimby now. The problem is that you are losing out a huge amount on bot side. No, it did end up going for the reset, so going to miss it in the wave. Give over that a uh, little bit of an extra play towards Patrick as well, but at least Trimby's getting a bit back for his troubles. Certainly does, and of course, a lot of XP loss there in the mid lane, or at least not given over to Abadage, as Peach did have to catch a few of those creeps as well. That said, Humanoid's still only level 5 to Abadage, is level 6. We'll see when he's able to match here. Is Odomwamne going to crash this wave? Yeah, that wave is far too big for Razok to really look for a gank that, and uh, it would be really detrimental if Oscar Rinnan also lost all of that farm. Peach now moving into the bot side. Limit alongside him, level four, close to five, but for the time being, it seems that XO just gonna take their time, steal away some of these camps. Smile up for Peach, we'll lock that one in. All right, so we continue to ha kind of have that reserved early game. Yeah, and again, just feels like uh, some pretty textbook clean early game map movement there from Excel. Odwamne has pressure on the top side. He uses his pressure to go into enemy jungle, spots out enemy jungler, knows that the rest of his team is safe to move in bottom side. So clean stuff. Obviously not too flashy quite yet. We'll see what that vision can actually get for them as the control ward is cleared out by Razork and Trimby. Buzz Peach. Knockup coming through. Root there. Limit now flashing forward. Gonna look for the headbutt. Trimby gonna interrupt at least one. Razor now throwing down a lot of damage. Noah uncontested on the backside. The Chakrams are there as well. Red White coming in just in time. Daisy, can the knockup stop the fight? It will. But overall, Fnatic finding the kill they were looking for. Support for support. I mean, the fact that Noah hit six, huge in that play. Patrick doesn't have access to his own and may not have access to his life as he just about manages to sidestep away from that seismic shove. Look back, not going to connect there. Very close. Could have been much more disastrous for Excel. A bit messy across the board. One for one overall. I really thought that that fight was going to go way worse for Fnatic. The fact that Noah was able to deal so much damage. You talked about the level six, and it really was doing so much in the fight. Both kills going over to either AD carry. Means that they're getting closer and closer to those bigger first items, which are going to be massive. So we look back and we see that Trimby. He thinks that there is a jungler in the bush there. He gets rooted up. Limit flashes in. Good hook from Trimby to interrupt the engage. Still gets knocked up, though. No on the side, though. Completely untouched. There's the ult. He hits onto all three members. Uses the safety of the brush to retreat. And even with Daisy on him, they decide not to overcommit there. So uh, well played from both sides. Still gold lead in favor of Fnatic for now. 1,000 in their favor, a lot of that coming from the jungle, you can see Talia. Like many AP junglers, once she gets just a little bit of money under her belt, she can buy those early items like Lost Chapter. Even without early boots purchase, she's just speeding through the jungle clear. Yeah, you have a fantastic clear, but I think it's been interesting to see how like it has become more of like Razor and Peach sticking to their own jungle rather than looking for these neutral objectives. Like when we think back to game number one, it was like five minutes is on the map, cool, we're going for a dragon. But as the series has progressed on, and I mean, the stakes have risen and risen, it feels like the teams have been less, well, 
confident to go towards things like the Dragon in the early stages. Even you look at Rift Herald, not really contested at the moment either. Like, this is where you can see how much this means for both teams. Fnatic realized that their life for the opportunity at the World Qualifying Series, or even to go further and just straight up qualify for Worlds, lies in the being able to find success in this game. Yeah, and even if you weren't around, for the past years of Fnatic, it's that pedigree that is a boon when you join Fnatic and you immediately see all these people excited about you. It's also a burden because these are fans with very high expectation and organization with very high expectations. And while they've already done so much to impress uh, in their summer run to make it to top three, and also it feels for like it's run, worlds are bust. For their run to be denied by Excel of all people, the team that they upset yeah. last year and the team that's never represented EMEA World would be huge for XL organization and for a lot of the players on the XL lineup. But now here is that first dragon. Razok off on the side, doesn't have his ultimate just yet. Humano trying to come down, but Fnatic calling it off. They see no real way in which they can win this. X Flash coming over the wall, trying to interrupt the stun, gonna stop any potential follow up. Limit has the ultimate, they just need to back away. Slow coming in from the Ultra Shock Laser, push back on Abadage is good, stops the play in its tracks. XL will walk away. The buff with the dragon but not going to be able to grab anything else. Meanwhile, Humanoid already tearing through that tower. I think you might be getting a little bit of a taste of what Fnatic can achieve in these later fights if Limit is trying to be the big engage tool for XL. You've got the Poppy, you've got that Unraveler for Razork as well. It makes it quite tough for Limit to actually be that engage, which is why he's trying to find these creative flank opportunities. Doesn't quite work out from there, but still, Dragon going across to XL. They're going to be happy with that. They're going to continue to farm up. And it'll be a case of, okay, can they at least keep it in touching distance so they have that big scaling opportunity with the Aphelios? The Talia late game as well, and maybe early kill on Dabba Dage, but at least that Tristan in the back pocket as well. Forcing out the flash is big too for any fights to come, especially in the early and mid game this year. Much more confident to go for the big Shurima Shuffle style plays. Is going to be that much harder, especially considering there's a Talia and a Poppy on the other side. The Wamne and Oscar living their best lives. <laughs> Odawamne, a completed Sunfire Cape, doing just a little bit more damage to the wave. I think the lack of vision is coming back to hurt Excel a little bit here. You can see Limit and Abadage are trying to work together now to establish it, but the fact they don't know the Razorks on Rift Herald as it's just taken there means that Patrick wasn't really able to push in onto this bottom side. You don't have Abadage and Limit kind of coming down to help him out either so they can try and trade for this. So, yes, you did get the Dragon earlier for Excel, but I think there's moments where the Vision control would love to be a bit better for Excel, but Fnatic on this top side with the amount of push the fact for Humanoid and Oskjörn are kind of keeping that part of the map dark. Although, as you said, there's a little bit more coming through for Excel now. Yeah, Odawamne knocked up, continuing to tank the tower, forcing a flash out in the 1v1 is Oscar, even if the wave pressure is in their favor. The fumble there from Odawamne sticking around a bit too long here. Sabadage will complete the crown. Just trying to mitigate the all-in potential. And again, quiet. We thought the previous game was going to be quiet. It was not whatsoever. But this game, neither side wants to fumble. Neither side wants to make a mistake. Yep. There is, of course, <laughs> along the line. <laughs> Thank you for hovering over the character with the most ridiculous sounds. Wee, wee, as we're wee, like, wee. it's a serious time. Tension. A serious sport. Pressure. Sport. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's like when we were casting. Do you remember when we first discovered the Nico thing? Where she yes. could spin her tail. Spin the copter? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Serious <laughs> game. <laughs> Crush him with the candy giant, Peach. <laughs> oh, Harold okay, and locked Daisy. Up. Daisy had stronger support there. That should be the tower gone. Trower coming in. Knockup now going to come down as well. Limit immediately going to be forced off, but the flickback still connects. Good damage onto the Alistair, but that flat damage reduction, or percentage damage reduction rather, stopping any further follow up. Both well, AD carries were on the way, so you can see teams looking to see if they could buy a bit of time until their AD carry showed up, but that Limit now nice. with no ultimate and really no real hope of getting any healing. Needs to back away, which needs Patrick on his own. And Fnatic kind of realized that. Looks like they want to try and push in on this wave, maybe get some plates just before it dies in 40 seconds. I mean, even though it's been a slow game, it is Fnatic that have continued to build leads. A lot of them have come from the mid lane. Humanoid with this constant pressure. Every time Abadage has looked for a window to move, that tower has taken some serious damage. And uh, ultimately resulting in the tower falling, thanks to the Rift Herald, means that Fnatic have now opened up the map significantly. When they push in that mid lane, it's much easier for them to get deeper control and then start moving into the enemy jungle and start translating that pressure to either side. Static Shiv done, of course, for Humanoid. really helps with that wave clear as well. So Fnatic off to a good start. I mean, overall right now, Fnatic, I feel like smooth sailing 
Leandries and Sork shoes for Razork at this stage of the game. You've already got Kraken. Moving towards the second item on Aphelio. Static for the Tristana. Hitting all these nice early spikes that just make it so difficult for Excel to really contest you in a lot of these lanes. I do say though, when we get to this next dragon, I think that's where you might have an opportunity to Excel, right? The Patrick having the Static Shiv available is going to be a little bit stronger than Noah as, as long as you're able to actually get this area into position to deal the damage. You can see quite a bit coming out, especially when you get that E in the charge forward with the Ultimus, which is what was missing in that initial engage on bot side. So as long as they can get Abadage to push out mid against the Aphelios, they should be able to contest this. Although Fnatic doing a good job of getting that vision down and playing off the humanoid's pressure on that bottom side. Peach already losing the blue buff here. Not quite able to contest on the camps there. Spotted on vision. They'll clear the control ward. Faking the hook there. The knockback now coming out. Wall coming in as well. Limit again. Gonna get pushed back immediately, forcing the all. Massive damage already. Level nine. Nice spike for the Talia to have. His Odawamne's off to the side, hoping to get something done here. Knock upon the Trimby. His former brothers trade blows. Have we said that narrative enough? Be victorious. <laughs> well, Trimby did run away. It's the moral victory there for Oduamne. Mm -hmm. Of course, Fnatic have the numbers advantage right now. We look at Abadage making his way towards top lane. He has his TP up, so Oduamne is catching bots. Oscar Renan, how much damage can you do to this tower? Probably not a lot. But there should be a dragon secured for Fnatic and XL aren't really in a position to contest, so instead they'll likely prioritize this mid tier one. I think you can see the jitters on XL though. Immediate TP from Moto Omni when there wasn't really any chance of contesting. It's again like XL trying to make sure that they're not losing out more on the map, but Dragon now taken, so XL immediately try and move up towards this top side. They want to try and trade and cross map for this terror in the bottom half of the map, but well, Ross Gernon just gonna walk away from this one. I and Fnatic are just gonna keep pushing. Yeah. At this stage, Odoamne gonna ult out to safety, but the most that Excel can really hope for here is to trade tower for tower, but Excel have, or rather Fnatic, have already traded up a dragon. And now, starting to pressure this tier two, making things super difficult for Excel to do anything. And now Odoamne may be gonna get taken down here. Do they want to full commit? Explosive charge will not be enough, but at least forcing him out for the bottom lane. Patrick and Limit return to the bot lane. They should be able to catch this wave. As Fnatic, as you already identified that top lane going down means that XL really can't convert it into much because of the sheer amount of control Fnatic on the bot side of the map. This vision setup is good. They also have a ward in the middle of mid lane too. Abadage getting zoned away. Fnatic slowly but surely gaining full control over the map. And that's because the amount of pressure Humanoid really has. You can see him immediately straight down into the bottom side. And this is why the Tristana can be so frustrating to play against. It's really hard to go up against her in a side lane because she's got that all-in potential. But that same can be reversed where you just end up popping away. And now with the slow pressure in the top side, Oskirnan has just been happy enough to start chipping away at the tower. So realistically, XL need to find some way to fight. And it feels like the Rift Herald in 10 seconds is that. But with Oskirnan gone for the reset, he'll hop back into the bottom side. XL should be able to push out top. Not too much control over mid. So I thought XL might immediately try and start this one up, but realistically, again, it feels like this is Fnatic favorite. I think Certainly it's just because Patrick's not in a good position, right? Come back to base. Is he going to be able... Is he going to have enough to get an upgrade? Yeah, okay. Caulfield, cool Warhammer. Razor slowly but surely working through that objective is Oda Wamne, at least. Matching Oscar on the bottom side, and it's a fair that you bring up Patrick. Patrick has been the carry, as you would expect from a bot laner, most certainly, but incredible numbers in game three, looking solid across the series thus far, but that game especially needs to replicate that performance because he's against a triple carry threat from the side of Fnatic. So many tools to stop him from having a Zeri moment. The reliability of the Nautilus, of the Poppy, is going to make things so tricky for Zeri in this game. It's a slow game, boys, but of course a lot on the line. We've already talked about it extensively, but a win here for XL will guarantee them fourth seed for the World Championship. Yeah, it's awkward because we just want to say XL lock Worlds, but it's technically yeah. not Worlds. It's in yeah. Korea, adjacent <laughs> to the World Championship. <laughs> but NA and EU, is sorry, World's we're not allowed to have series. each a fourth seed. Only yeah. one of us gets a fourth Only seed. Only one of us. So we got to qualify, yeah. and it will be against Golden Guardians. Now, of course, basically what will happen is whoever wins this series will play up against BDS next week. Mm -hmm. Loser of that plays Golden Guardians. Winner, third seed at Worlds. Uh, or more. Or more. Or gets more. Gets to play at Montpellier. So sure. that's exciting. As Fnatic continue their TP. slow, inevitable march into this bot lane tier two. 
They're just poking at each other. Shelly's gonna get the charge. Oh! How much health on the tower, observers? Click it. <laughs> 15! It's still weird to me that they so TP'd up excitement. a dagger down, because, I mean, Tristana's just gonna get top side. So Humanoid's still gonna get the tower. You've now wasted your TP. And unless you were able to actually find a fight there, which they don't really have great tools for, as we already talked about, like Limits struggling to find these engages in front to backs, it means that Fnatic still come out massively on top, even if they don't get that bot tower. Fnatic are... Every game we've had thus far has been super explosive and mostly dominant to one side. Yeah. But this game has just been slow, steady, Fnatic. It was a flash or a hex flash. flash. I believe it was just a normal flash. I think that was a flash. Yeah, I think he was trying to hop over the seismic shove and then was hoping he'd be able to be in range for the headbutt, but slightly he misjudged us. Yeah. yeah. Probably got the tower in the meantime, of course. So it is four towers to one. I am still debating why Alistair was faked into Talia, Tristana, and then, you know, you hovered Poppy, locked Tristana, and then they locked Poppy. I just don't really see how Limit gets to play the game, if I'm being really honest with you. He does every, like, five minutes. Well, I suppose, whatever, 4.30 when his flash is. True. He's probably running Cosmic Insights. You say that, but I still feel like Oscar Rinnan is just going to not let him play the game. <laughs> the thing is, it's tough. It, say nothing else about Talia. She's annoying. If you have a dash, Talia and Poppy are frustrating champions to play against. Yep. There's a way, but it does feel like he has to kind of MacGyver a, an entrance into the fight. All right, fight. Dragon, here we go, everyone. Wake up, stand up straight. This is the moment, right? You're gonna get a big fight right here. Fist fight, limit, finding the angle, trying to find the angle. Razor, throwing a wall next to the Dragon. It cannot retreat back into its home. It can and it will. Oscar finding the knockback. That's his ear out of the fight, Fnatic. Not gonna get over aggressive here. Instead, just trying to zone limit away, forcing the Alistar ult, ult already out gone. early. 5K, the Dragon did get reset a bit there. 4K getting lower. It looks like we're taking the 50-50. Daisy now zooming into the back line of Fnatic. They're immediately going to delete her. And just taken out like that is the Dragon. Peach going to take that one away. Oh, to one man on the front line. Just getting shredded by the multiple carries coming through on this team. Knocked back on Patrick into the wall. But Patrick can't turn it back with a bit more damage. Oscar taken down as Aerie starts to tear through. But it's only one kill to one thus far. Both sides backing away briefly. Rather continuing to step forward. Limit desperate to find an angle, but Limit will just get taken out. That was not his time. And now Noah on the chase. The Gale Force forward marks him and knocks him down. It's a double for the Aphelios. The button hitting is better on Fnatic's side. But Humanoid gets a great knockback onto Abadage as he tries to go in for the swoop and boop. And then you get the missed headbutt pulverized combo from Limus. And now Fnatic. What's the. Are they going to. Yeah, bad. Why forward? not? 10 seconds on Oscar Renin. You have the TP <laughs> available to you. You have three sources of damage. They're I gonna think they can alive. just melt this down, yeah. Red, I, white. In the green, white, the most disgusting bearing taking champion in the game next to Cassio. Just look at him. Peach has no smite, there's nothing he can do. I gotta say, well played by Fnatic. In all of the, the bloodlust and aggressive games we have seen from Fnatic, it is rare to see a game this clean and controlled, and it has looked very good for them. Yeah, I mean, this was great. I mean, Oskernan tanks up the ults coming in from Oda Wamne, and then they're able to just follow up so well. Oskernan then once more going in, trying to set himself up in this choke point so people can't follow. But watch here, as Abadaki goes in, gets knocked back by the Humanoid Ultimus, and then as Limus walks up with the Hex Flash coming forward, the Flash coming forward from Humanoid, messes up the Heppel Pulverize combo, and ends up not being able to get that big upset that maybe, just maybe, could have turned that play around. Again, I think this is an example of how difficult it really is for XL to get a good engage onto this fight. Oscar Rinnan acting as such a strong frontline, and his ability to also create the 4v5 with the ult, removing Abadage from the start of the fight, also extremely valuable. Meanwhile, Razzle and Humanoid are just untouched on the back line. There is no real threat. And then that doesn't even take into consideration what Noah can do in the team fight, which means that it's just, it's, it's hard for me to see a way in which XL actually come out on top in these fights. Even though they have all this range with Zeri, Zia, even though they do have very good scaling, I feel like Fnatic just have so many tools to, to keep XL at arm's length. Yeah, I just do not think that Excel's backline can free hit enemy frontline ever. And I feel that Fnatic absolutely can free hit Odawamne and Limit in most of these fights. So it is so tricky to play out a front to back. And when Fnatic have this big of a gold lead, it's hard to find a fight on your favor whatsoever. They move towards top. They've pushed in mid. Humanoid being sent bot. Doesn't have the TP, but stealing away those camps. Fnatic just trying to leverage this Baron as much as they can. 
thing is though, you got Humanoid just shoving so heavily down in this bottom lane that it's gonna become hard for Odo Omni to really try and contest that if that wave starts to hit on towards the tower. So for Fnatic, they pretty much got control everywhere that they would like to alone. Trimby uh, yeah, and Oscar and R on their own. Uh, I'm trying to see what Noah and Razor are up to because they kind of just seem to be hovering around in the back line, not up to too much. Yeah, Puck not quite gonna connect to the wall there. Will not bring him in at this stage. Not the most explosive Baron power play, most certainly still hard to break down some of these towers. The static shivs area, excellent wave clear. Pressure here on the top side of the map, just trying to push Oscar away. As Fnatic have control of the jungle, but they haven't been able to do a whole lot with it. Desyncs on the back timings mean that uh, just haven't all been on the map at the same time. Fnatic getting very good at forcing Limit to use his ultimate. But this Baron really not getting much value. Oh. 15 seconds and it will wear off. Of course, they did get the gold from the Baron itself, but no objectives really secured. Relative to Excel, they've lost gold. You get 1,500 gold from the Baron. So True. Excel has actually made more money than Fnatic in the time since the Baron buff going down. And you're delighted with that as uh, Excel. You get to hold off on the Baron. 50 seconds now until Chemso, or Chem Dragon, I should say. So you get to push out your waves. And even if you don't want to contest this, there's still an opportunity to try and like trade it for mid lane tower, or try and find some space for yourself. So I think for Excel, getting that standing gold is going to be your best friend here because two dragons apiece leaves you in an okay spot and you can buy a little bit more time to try and fight for this third dragon eventually for Fnatic. Game does not get easier though. Even Shroud, the Poppy on the top side of the map alongside the Abyssal, Razor, Humanoid, Noah all going to hit so hard in these fights. Still have to fight so incredibly cleanly. They can't rely on just identifying a single target and deleting that one person. There's two more carries to back one up if a single should fall. So definitely tough. So again, have the luxury of losing here. They can afford to take it to a game five because they've brought themselves to match point because of an excellent game three. But you know, with a series like this, with this much pressure, with both teams playing so slowly, so deliberately in game four that neither, or at least Excel, do not want it to go to a game five. It's gonna be tough, as you say, for XL. I'm trying to figure. Oh, actually, might have got the pick here. Might be the angle. Stun. It is not the angle. That is not re engage onto Oscar. No oh. one coming in over the wall. Maybe they can start to show through the tank line. Patrick for now uncontested on the backside. Not us ultimate going in, but there is no follow up. Ultra Shock Laser, Noah now trying to respond with an ultimate of his own as Abadagi manages to take a tower. So, cheeky play from Excel, able to break down that tier two. So, I think Excel had actually spotted the fact that Razork was on the bottom side of the map taking the Grom and going for a reset, which is why they're like, okay, this is a 4v4, so we can actually play aggressive into this as we get the, the tower for Abadagi. So, they're still getting some of the standing gold. Again, like, it's a, it's kind of putting a blaster, to, blaster over a pretty gaping wound for the side of XL, but at least it's getting something back in their pockets because I, th I feel like if you're trying to engage this is XL, you need to try and find some way to nerdy like engage in a minion line or something so you can headbutt to a minion and then flash forward as a limit rather than actually having your your engage forward first because if you're trying to get Abadage to go in for an engage or limit to go in for engage, there's just so many tools to shut you down. I feel like you have to use these flashes while they're up and available creatively to catch Fnatic unaware. Abadage, nearly level 16, nearly has the death cap. I imagine he's trying desperately to farm that up before the Baron spawns. Can you press the gold button? Please straight us. I can press the gold button. Somewhere on there. Yeah, bam. This one? No, the other one. The one for the players. <laughs> this one. That's the Badger. <laughs> so he's got 800 gold. The other one is he's also for the players. Yeah, but this one shows me how much they're sitting on. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to know how far he was off that death cap, and he's really pushing in bot. He should have enough gold after he takes Krugs. Baron is alive, though. TP for Abadage. Humanoid very close to 17. Uh, Fnatic could just rush this. Yeah. Decent guns for the Abelios. Starting to shred through. Triple carries again. Wall comes out. Not going to block anybody off, though. Just going to stop any potential flashes over the wall. TP now coming in. They're just going to shred down the objective. Fnatic, can they take the fight as well? Backing off for now, but Noah again on the front line. Limit instantly to the backside, but Abadage is engaged. He's going to be interrupted. A clean knockback from Oscar, and the Azir is out of the fight. The Poppy might have just won it all. Patrick still trying to do what he can to shred through the rest of the fight, but there are too many carries on the side of Fnatic. A Baron secured five members alive. Fnatic cleanly wipe XL off the map.
And with this, with these type of death timers, Fnatic may look to end the game right here, right now. It was slow, it was steady, but it was a continuous march forward for Fnatic. And Peach, now standing on his lonesome in the base, will have to face the full brunt of Fnatic. Fnatic barreling in. Just a matter of time before they close this one out. Tearing through Excel. Baron buff there, limit is not going to be enough. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a game five. One more match, do or die. Excel or Fnatic. Silver scrapes to guarantee fourth place. We have to see if Limit and XL can try and find some different strategy here, because that Talia and that Poppy made their game miserable. I just, I'm still baffled by the by the Alistair pick, man. I feel like that it literally couldn't do anything the whole game, and they just had no way of really getting good fights off.